Hey, what's up everyone? So we are on week four of our series that we have been going through the book of Luke. Now, what I want you guys to remember is that Luke was a doctor and obviously he wouldn't have been at all of these events to see all these things happen, but he would have definitely sat down and listened and written down the words of people who got to see everything that happened and the events that Jesus was at and what he did. So that must have been amazing. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a quick recap just to make sure that we are all on the same page. So week one, what happened is that we got to look at the Bible and how it came about and how there's so many different books in the Bible about different things. The Bible is a collection of writings. It's not just one book, but a collection of many books that were written in various times and places in history. In week two, we got to hear about the prophecies that both Elizabeth and Mary got about the babies that they would have. And just as the angel had said, it was. Elizabeth had given birth to a baby boy and they named him John. Instantly, Zachariah was able to speak again and they began praising God. In week three, we looked at the birth of Jesus and what his childhood looked like. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding of the scriptures and the answers he was giving. And this week, we're going to be looking at the story of John the Baptist. Remember the story about Elizabeth and Zechariah and the baby that they were prophesied that they would have? Well, that baby is John the Baptist and we're going to be looking at him. And we're going to be looking at what the prophecy that was said where he's going to prepare the way for the Lord and what that looks like. But before we get into that, let's stand to our feet because we're going to have a time of worship. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. It's not for selfish reasons. It's not to make us cool. It's not to make us popular or be too cool for school. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. To bless all those around us. To bless all those in need. To bless those God has called us to, whoever that might be. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. So, what exactly are these gifts? Let me tell you. But first, are you ready? There's prophecy. To prophesy. There's service. That could be my thing. There's teaching. Is that maybe me? Encouragement. Could be. There's also generosity hmm. and leading if you're called to it, but don't forget mercy. That too. And do it cheerfully. We get to show the whole world Jesus. We get to be the body of Christ. We get to shine His light around us and make this life we're living count. We get to show the whole world Jesus. We get to be the body of Christ. We get to shine His light around us and make this life we're living count. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. It's not for selfish reasons. It's not to make us cool. It's not to make us popular or be too cool for school. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. To bless all those around us. To bless all those in need. To bless those God has called us to, whoever that might be. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. Okay, I think I get it. Let's recap one more time. There's prophecy. There's service. There's teaching. Encouragement. There's also generosity and leading if you're called to it. But don't forget mercy. And do it cheerfully. We get to show the whole world Jesus. We get to be the body of Christ. We get to shine His light around us and make this life we're living count. We get to show the whole world Jesus. We get to be the body of Christ. We get to shine His light around us and make this life we're living count. There's prophecy. There's service. There's teaching. Encouragement. 
There's also generosity and leading if you're called to it But don't forget mercy And do it cheerfully You've called us to reach out with your love to shine bright for all to see the wonder of your name. Sizo kuma si hambe, sizo kagaza, sizo lipagamisa igamela ko. Ujesu imwele si akudu. You called us to trust in all you say to follow for all to see the wonder of your name. Sizo kuma si hambe, sizo kagaza, sizo lipagamisa igamela ko. Everybody come on and sing, see I could do me, sir. Everybody come on and sing, see I could do me, sir. Everybody come on and sing, see I could do me, sir. Everybody come on and sing, see I could do me, sir. Everybody come on and sing, see I could do me, sir. Everybody come on and sing, see I could do me, sir. Everybody come on and sing, see I could do me, sir. Everybody come on and sing, see I could do me, sir. Jesu imwele, si ya kutumisa, uwe kupela imwela Jesu imwele, si ya kutumisa, si paga misa igama lako Jesu imwele, si ya kutumisa, uwe kupela imwela Jesu imwele, si ya kutumisa, si paga misa igama lako John the Baptist was said to be the greatest man who ever lived. Now, John the Baptist was only a couple months older than his cousin Jesus, and his mission was to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus. That meant that he would tell people about Jesus and tell them to get ready for Jesus to come which he did. Now he was a wild, wild man. He lived in the wilderness. He ate locusts and honey. And some people would have been like, oh, this man's a little bit weird, but he knew his mission and his mission was to prepare the way for Jesus. Let's check out his story today. 
This is what the prophet Isaiah had said about John. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. The valleys will be filled, and the mountains and hills made level. The curves will be straightened, and the rough places made smooth. And then all people will see the salvation sent from God. Isaiah prophesied before John was even born that this is what he would do. John went from place to place on both sides of the Jordan River, preaching to everyone that they needed to turn away from their sins and turn to God and be baptized. He would tell everyone who listened, and even those who wouldn't, that they needed to repent of their sins and ask God to forgive them. John would teach the crowds who gathered around him many things. If you have two shirts, give one to the poor. If you have food, share it with those who are hungry. He even spoke to the tax collectors who were known to treat people unfairly and take more money than they should. Collect no more taxes than the government requires. Many people wondered if John was the Messiah, the savior they were all waiting for. But John always answered them by saying, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming soon who is greater than I am. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He will separate those who have repented and have turned to him from those who have not. One day, while John was baptizing people in the Jordan River, Jesus came to be baptized. John told Jesus he was unworthy to baptize him and tried to talk Jesus out of it by saying that Jesus should be the one to baptize him. But Jesus said to John, it must be done so that we can do all that God asks of us. And so John agreed to baptize Jesus. After Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water and the heavens opened. Then he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and settled on his shoulder. And a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. It was soon after this moment when Jesus would begin his public ministry and make to everyone that he was the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior they had promised. Wow, isn't it amazing that John gave up his whole life to preach the gospel of the Lord? Even though there were people mocking him and uh, calling him names, he, he didn't let anything stand in his way to preach the gospel of God. So today we're looking at what it means to repent and be baptized. These are the words that John the Baptist used all the time. He would say, repent and be baptized. Now, being around church for a while, you might have heard these words thrown around, but you might not know exactly what it means to repent and be baptized. So today we're looking at those things. One, we repent and two, we get baptized and in that order. Now let's look at repentance to begin with. Now to repent, that's kind of like to say sorry, but it's a bit more than just saying I'm sorry. Because you see, sometimes when we say I'm sorry, what we're really saying is, well, I'm sorry that I got caught or I'm just saying sorry to get you off my back. So I just kind of say it, oh, I'm sorry but I don't really mean it with all my heart. You see, repentance means that I look at what I've done and I regret it. And I'm sorry that I chose to do things that way. And I say, God, I am turning away from completely. I'm turning my back on those things and how I used to live. And I wanna follow you with everything I have. And that's where the salvation prayer comes in, where we say, God, I am sorry for living life my own way, but now, I choose to follow you. That's repentance. Repentance is not just saying sorry. Repentance is changing. It means never wanting to do that same thing ever again. Okay, so that's repentance. But now what does it mean to be baptized? What does it mean to be dunked under the water? And why do we wanna get dunked under the water? Well, come with me and I'm gonna show you. Baptism is like a picture of what takes place in our hearts when we repent. You see, when we repent of our sins and give our lives to Jesus, He forgives us of all the wrongs we have done and He makes us brand new. And we are able to call ourselves children of God. You see, when we go under the water, it's representing dying to our old sinful self, just like Jesus died for our sins. And then when we come up out of the water, it's as though we're rising with Jesus, that we're coming out as this brand new creation and child of God. So just simply put guys, is baptism represents what went on in our hearts when we gave our hearts to Jesus, when we repented of our sin and Jesus made us new. So who can remember our memory verse? Guys, it's not that long and I mean, it's week four. Week four, you should know it by now. But if you're feeling a little bit rusty, as always, I'm gonna give you a clue because I mean, I'm a nice person, you know? Nah, okay. So I'm gonna put it up, the whole memory verse, then I'll put it up on the screen, but I'm gonna put it backwards, but I'm gonna change it up even more. 
and I'm gonna take one word away. And if you can guess what that word is, then you've aced it, you've got it. I believe in you guys. Okay, so are you ready? You're gonna have 10 seconds to figure it out. And go! Did you get it? Did you get the missing word? Yeah, yeah. Did you get it? Uh, I hope you did. Okay, I believe in you. You got this. Okay, so let's all just say it together one last time. So, Luke 11 verse 28. Blessed are all who hear the word of God and put it into practice. There you go. He's the one, he's the one who makes the way. He's the one, he's the one who makes the way. He's the one, he's the one who makes the way. He's the one who makes the way. He's the name, he's the name above all names. He's the name, he's the name above all names. He's the name, he's the name above all names. He's the name above all names. He's the one, he's the one who makes the way. He's the one, he's the one who makes the way. He's the one, he's the one who makes the way. He's the one who makes the way. He's the name, he's the name above all names. He's the name, he's the name above all names. He's the name, he's the name above all names. He's the name above all names. Before it all began, God had a very perfect plan to hold us all together in his very perfect hands. He told us in the Bible that he'll never let us go. He told us that he loves us, and that's one thing that we gotta know. He's the one, he's the one who makes the way. He's the one, he's the one who makes the way. He's the one, he's the one who makes the way. He's the one who makes the way. He's the name, he's the name above all names. He's the name, he's the name above all names. He's the name, he's the name above all names. He's the name above all names. His plan for us was Jesus, and that's never gonna change. He is the way, the truth, the life, our God for every day. He calls us his own children because that is what we are. He taught us that we're his, and that's one thing to know for sure. He's the one, he's the one who makes the way. He's the one, he's the one who makes the way. He's the one, he's the one who makes the way. He's the one who makes the way. He's the name, he's the name above all names. He's the name, he's the name above all names. He's the name, he's the name above all names. He's the name above all names. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. Let's do this, we got this. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. Let's do this, we got this. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. Let's do this, we got this. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. Let's do this, we got this. He's the one, he's the one who makes the way. He's the one, he's the one who makes the way. He's the one, he's the one who makes the way. He's the one who makes the way. He's the name, he's the name above all names. He's the name, he's the name above all names. He's the name, he's the name above all names. He's the name above all names. So maybe after today you guys feel like getting baptized is something that you would like to do and it's something that you've maybe thought about in the past but today is a day where you're actually like I want to do this and I want to encourage you to go speak to a parent uh, or to one of your leaders just to make sure that you fully understand what exactly baptism is and if you've never had the, the chance to give your life to the Lord that's something we need to make sure that we do before we get baptized because the Bible says believe and be baptized and it's a very simple prayer that you can pray if you want to give your life to the Lord and then obedience is the very next step and through that is where baptism takes place. My heart 
is yours Take my life Take everything All I am Who I surrender to you Lord, I pray Trust in you You are faithful and true My heart is yours Take my life Take everything All I am Who I surrender to you Lord, I pray we have almost come to the end of week four of our series the way now today we looked at baptism now baptism can look like a really big deal and it is a big deal but it's not complicated being baptized is simply being obedient it's doing what god asks us to do remember our memory verse says blessed are those who hear the word of god and put it into practice and so by being baptized we're putting into practice what the Bible tells us to do. So today we learned about John the Baptist and his mission was to prepare the way of the Lord, to tell people that Jesus was coming and they better come for him. And to get ready for Jesus, they had to repent, which meant to turn from their sins and turn to God and then be baptized, which was showing in an outward expression what happened in their hearts, that they were now new in Christ, that going under the water and coming up is like dying to our old self and rising with Christ into a new creation filled with His Spirit. And so I want to encourage you guys, if you feel like you're ready to get baptized, chat to your parents, a leader, or, or whoever you need to at church to make sure that we can get you baptized and that we can be obedient to the Word of God. And so for next week, guys, I want to encourage you to read Luke chapter 4 to prepare yourselves for next week's part of the series. We'll see you there. So we've come to the end of this week's service again. And you know what that means? It means it's time for Sunday Funday Chunky Challenge. And of course, you know what? Last week uh, we had a, a guest appearance and I was like, you know what? We might as well bring him back to see if he can win this week or if he's just going to catch another owl. We have Cade Racha. Say hi to Cade, guys. Just give him a, give him a wave. There it is. Nice. So this is what this week's Sunday Funday Challenge is. You're going to need some water. You're going to need a glass and you're going to need something to pour the water. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a glass and you guys are going to start with it empty and you need to pour water in there. And the object is to make sure the water does not spill out of the cup. The last person to pour before it spills out wins the game. So if you're pouring and it happens to overflow, then you lose. And it's going to go a little something like this.
<laughs> that was so hot. This thing is looking back. Yes! Come on! Yes! Another week, another L for Cade, and another dub for the Chunk Man. We'll see you guys next week. Cheers. <laughs>